everyone this is janet live video janet welcome thank you so much for coming wherever you are i know i'm late but welcome for those who are waking up i hope you watch this video for those of you who are busy i know the week is too early but today i came here to present i told you i'll come here and present about phd programs PhD programs for international students in the United States. I had to present this because people are asking. Okay, Sela is the first one, Purity, and Villa, Evelyn, Carol, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. But today, Jared, I'm going to talk about PhD programs because so many people have been asking me. If you ask me personally, I feel like the application is just the same. Like F1 student visa is the same okay whether you are doing a bachelor's degree a master's degree or a phd program but for the sake of my followers good morning everyone good evening hello i see all of you your greetings thank you so much for coming i hope you feel better after losing the green card for those who won i congratulate you i'm continuing to get names by the way i'm enjoying your messages in the uh, in the inbox i told you i'll go in the inbox so i'm enjoying your messages finally some of you i meet you there you are like janet you didn't answer my question i'm like really ask me now i'm here i'm here okay all right thank you so much for coming phd programs i'll be quick in the united states so first of all you want to understand your grades because you're international students probably the school will require your documents to go through evaluation services okay now before i continue I have to tell you some of the things that surprised me, okay? I was surprised when I was doing my research to find out that for you to do a PhD program, you do not have to have a master's. So that kind of surprised me that you do not have to have a master's. Now, you have to be careful. Because some of you, you come here and you go back home. When you go back home, they will ask you, but where is your master's? You don't just go from a bachelor's degree and you jump into PhD. You understand? So most schools will tell you if you had a bachelor's degree for four years, then you can apply for PhD. Okay? But if you had your bachelor's degree maybe for three years, then you need a master's. Are you understanding the difference? Okay? You need a bachelor's degree for three years and I don't mean diploma. Don't get me confused. Okay? I mean you went to university and finished a bachelor's degree that is equivalent to the United States and you finished how many years three then you need a master's to apply for a phd program but if you have a four-year program then you can apply straight to the phd program okay there are so many schools that offer phd programs phd programs generally are not very competitive okay but most of the time most of you that want to do phds you are good first of all you are good okay now, some of you will say, Janet, which grades are good? Because some of you are first class division, second class division. You have all these things, okay? The school will guide you on credential evaluation. So, if your grades are not too good, I always say here, learn to talk to people. There's something called statement of purpose. Make sure you shine. Make sure you explain your grades. Some of us, we come from these countries, they give us a C and they think they are helping us. Maybe the best student had a B minus and to them that is okay. No, this country, people are used to seeing A's. So you want to explain. Although you see C minuses, although you see D's in my transcripts at the university, the way they grade us an A is like a 70. And it's very tough to raise that, okay? So you just need to explain yourself. You need to explain yourself if you think you have weak grades, you need to... And by the way, before you write that statement of purpose, always do your research. Don't just go writing stuff. I mean, present yourself like a potential PhD student, okay? So which points have I said today? Some schools, I'm not saying all schools, okay? They just require your bachelor's degree, which is four years, and you can apply directly to doctorate programs. Most of them, or some of them, they require you to have a master's program, which is always, or most of the time, at least two years before you join. What? The PhD. Now, I know someone that did a master's program in one year. Sometimes it's how competitive you are, how fast you are. It depends how many hours you put in yourself, okay? So just understand that, okay? Having said that, having said that, most PhD programs that will require you to do an English test, okay, TOEFL, some schools, again, they're exempt. Just think, just think of this as a student visa, F1, 
okay it doesn't make any difference okay maureen i see your comments everyone thank you so much for coming all right so anyways i didn't know how much to say about phd programs but generally they are not competitive okay some universities here sometimes offer scholarships to phd students jared is very right they have uh, graduate assistantships when you are phd students more than likely you'll end up not paying a lot of fees if not you'll end up going to school for free why because you have a lot to offer you have a lot in, especially in assisting with research you'll always get graduate assistantships understand that just go ahead and apply and today i'm not going to touch about the other you know um j1 most students in phd come on j1 visas but today we are talking about f1 phd students okay always get in the problem is getting in sometimes you fear too much all you need is just to get started i was reading about another school they give you the same fees like the american citizen for phd students so they don't have international student rates they don't have instant tuition they just treat you like everyone else which is a good thing usually it's more expensive for international students all right so understand that i would say go ahead and apply many of you you know i love f1 student visas i love 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 f1 student visas because why okay there's a pathway to change your status into something else you can always drive you can always get a social security a number you can work you know all those flexible things on f1 student visa and i'll present to you as i promised how we're gonna pay for this f1 student visas okay this lottery thing not everyone will win okay and i don't like discouraging my followers because they are very passionate about green cards <laughs> let's focus where we have a big chance you understand my friends it's like me saying most of you love basketball and you want to play in the nba have you heard that or most of you, you like football and you're gonna play in F nfl very few people end up there but what are the chances that you succeed in education and become a teacher and become a doctor and become a nurse those are high chances everyone can do that okay so the reason i'm encouraging you guys let's not just focus on the green card let's focus on coming here let's learn how to come here on f1 starting from community college let's move to bachelor's let's move to master's let's move to phd i say this passionately because many of you because you didn't win the green card you're feeling like the world come to an end. this is just the beginning did you see one of my followers what she said she said janet i had applied for a canadian visa student they denied me, but because of your slogan, of you stand, you fall, Janet. I went, I made a new application, and now I'm in Canada. That is what we want, okay? What is uh, what's Abdul saying? I need a degree visa, kindly guide me. You just watch Janet's videos. I'm on YouTube, Janet Rangi, okay? PhD students, I don't know what to say except to tell you that your chances of getting the, into that program are much easier. And by the way, most schools here, they require you to... By the time you join masters, they need you to have a 3.0. And that is the only way that you can know you have a 3.0 is if they do a credential evaluation on you, okay? And the school will guide you about credential evaluation services, okay? Having said that, some of you, you follow me, okay? You come here on different visas and you always wonder, what can I do, okay? I've told you, if you're here, on a b1 b2 visa yes you can change to f1 student visa how you go to the university you get an i20 okay you exit you go and ask for f1 alternatively if you don't want to exit you go to uscis.gov you work with the school after they give you i20 you pay the service fees and then you apply for student visa am i clear f1 student visa who can apply for f1 student visa if you came here on visiting visa now is it easy probably not in fact let me just give you an example yesterday actually when yeah yesterday one of my followers said janet do you know six months ago i was asking you if it's possible janet i want to tell you now that actually i changed my b1 visa to f1 and it was approved I can't even, I have so many testimonials. 
I have so many testimonials, it makes me so happy. Now, I know changing from B visa to F1 is not always a guarantee, okay? I'm just telling you that one of my followers, she just called me yesterday and she said, Janet, I now have F1 student visa. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Do you understand? Now, if you come on these other visas, J1, yes, you can change. For those who are asking me, Janet, I'm on J1, J2 visa. For those who don't understand J1, J2, J1 is the person that applied to come on a scholarship or a scholar program or exchange program and the spouse comes on J2. Yes, they can apply for F1 student visa, but, but, but is the main word. I've always told you, J1 visas, they require you to go back home. There's something called home residency requirements. Unless they waive you from that, you cannot change. Okay, so sign those papers carefully when you're coming in on J1, J2 visa. For those who come in as F1 students, I've always said you can always come with your spouse and children on F2. Remember F2 again, can you change to F1 and go to school as a student? Yes. Okay, another group, H1B, okay, and their spouses come on H4. Can they change to student visa? Yes. What is the student visa? F1. All right. I hope I'm not confusing you. I'm just saying, if you come to on these other visas, yes, you can change. The ones I'm familiar with, of course, F1 is a student visa. But if you have a spouse, they come on F2. They reach here. They are not supposed to work. They are not supposed to go to school. But the children can go to school. You are like, no, this is too limiting. You can try. Go to school. Get an I-20. Change from F2 to F1. Go to school. Okay? J1, J2, same thing. H1, B, H4, same thing. You just go to the school, the same process. They might require different things for you to get that I-20. Now, people will be saying, but Janet, why this F1 student visa, whether it's PhD, whether it's a master's program, whether it's community college, whether it's a bachelor's degree. When you're here, I know it's expensive, but you can get a social security number. You can get a driver's license. You can work on campus. If you apply for hardship, they can give you a work permit. Okay? You can do something called, I think it's CPT. Someone remind me the name. You can still work. Okay, when you graduate, they'll give you OPT, optional practical training. When you get an employer, they can file for you H1B. H1B will eventually lead to green card. So that's why I like student visas. They give you time. Keyword, they give you time. They give you time to do your things here. Okay, they give you time. You can always bring your wife. You can always bring your husband. You can always bring your children. Okay, I love you back, Lily. Okay, who is that? Charles, Lily. All right, everyone else, I can't see your names. Who is that? Comfort, favor, okay? I'm enjoying your messages, by the way, all right? I'm doing this so we can be here in big numbers. If someone came to me today and asked me, Janet, why are you doing this? What is your goal, okay? I'll be like, I want a million Africans to show up in America and Canada until they say, we've had enough, okay? That is my goal. That is my goal. Why not? I mean, everyone has a contribution in society. Some of you, you tell me you have an orphanage. That is your contribution to society, right? Okay? I'm not a politician. Some of you contribute through politics. Okay? Janet believes if we can empower a million Africans through education, through them coming to see what the world knows. <laughs> in fact, that is another word I will tell them. Me, I'm here to ensure that people know what the world knows. If the world knows, then even us, we need to know. If the world is doing these things, even us, we need to do these things. Okay? So we can empower ourselves so that our communities can be strong. Very many communities here in the United States. Very many. Very many. Very many communities in millions. In millions. Okay? Even you can be here, what? In millions. What difference will it make? A lot. A lot, okay? We're going to help our children back home. We're going to help our people back home. We're going to improve our communities. If you're in public works, you're going to send information in public works. If you're in healthcare, you're going to send information in healthcare. If you're in teaching, you're going to send information in, you know, teaching. If you're an engineer, you'll send information in engineering in numbers. In numbers, not one or two people. We don't need one or two people, okay? We need thousands. We need millions. 
That is how we can have an impact. How? Janet, I don't have scholarships. If I had scholarships, then let me give 100 people scholarships. Let's see how that will help. Has it happened before? Yes. 100 people have come here. 1,000 people have come here. Let's see how that helps. Okay? It helps to some extent. Okay? But how about a million people getting the empowerment to do things on their own? Okay? Now, PhD students, I know you expected more, but there's nothing I can say more than to tell you to apply like an F1 student visa. I know I had to go through this hurdle before I move to the next one, which will be spouse visa. Many of you are asking me spouse visa. I'll present that. And then I'll start going back systematically because some people feel confused. I've done so many videos, they are feeling confused. So I need to put things in one place. Emma, why is it difficult for B1, B2 to change to F1? What are the challenges? That's a good question. I was reading it's hard. Maybe because what it takes for you to get a B visa is not as stringent as the people who went and got these other kinds of visas, you know? I don't know, because most of the time, B visa, you're just getting an invitation and you show up, you know? And some people told me, you just don't show up and you apply. You need to wait at least one or two months. And there are two options. You go to school, get the I-20. Not all schools give I-20s when they are changing their visas. Okay? Then you pay the service fees. Okay? Then you go back home and get F-1. Or you just apply through the immigration and wait. It's called change of status. You cannot start school until you've been approved. Okay? That is just the process. From what I'm reading, it looks like the people that are denied more are those that change from B visas. As I told you, do not be discouraged as we speak. One of my own, one of my own, okay? She just called me. Or actually, she texted me. I came across her message and she said, Janet, you know what? Do you remember six months ago when we were talking about this? I said, yes. Believe you me now, I changed my status and now I'm a student F1. I'm so happy. That is a real example. She was just like one of you now. Those of you asking me. Okay, this is not made up stuff. Me, I'm a very, very practical person. I always say the only thing that stands between me and you right now is the embassy. And I've done so many videos to help us to cross the embassy. Okay, believe you me, if you put in the work, like one of my followers told me, he's coming on F1 student visa. Janet, if people listen to you and go systematically, my friend, you will change your life. Okay? And no one is doing a brain drain here. No one wants us to move and come here just like that. Okay? We want to have options. Basically, we need to have options. Alright? We can't just stay there and be jobless. We can think outside the box and do something different. Okay? What is Princess is saying? How, how do you receive your confirmation number? This question I've been receiving it a lot. Some of you lost confirmation numbers. When you go there, just click confirmation number for God and they will guide you through okay Dennis take time and listen to her she has helped many and I'm one of them free knowledge God bless you Janet thank you so much Dennis okay Catherine is watching all right Caroline is watching all of you that have been watching I'm surprised there's a good quorum here now but this video will walk through I don't know how long it will take but I'm so happy that you came in today I fulfill PhD students if you want specific schools, well, I'm not worried about PhD students anyway because you're already good in research. I'm sure you can go and Google all those schools and compare options, follow my directions. If you haven't watched my F1 student visas, go and watch it. I always say, do your research, find the cheapest school possible, okay? Find the cheapest school that you'll be able to afford. Find it close to relatives or family that you can find roommates or, you know, share housing, such things, okay? Find schools that uh, give scholarships to international students. Find schools that have work programs. Those are some of the things you are looking when you are choosing the school, okay? All right. What's Bernard saying? Janet, I appreciate your commitment. Yes, I'm always committed. Thank you so much. Danny saying, what options if I wanted to move with my child? F1 student visa, your wife will come on F2, the children will come on F2 student visas, okay? Oh, and I know some of you who are married, you're always concerned, and I always tell you, if one of you gets F1, the next one can get F2. All right, what's Bright saying? Miss, please, I need your contact right here. By the way, I'm on Messenger. If you message me, sometimes I get there and I answer you, okay? 
Mercy, thank you, Janet. Indeed, you are God sent. Mercy, that's so kind of you, okay? Winfred is saying, how would you mind inbox you? I'm already here in the United States, okay? All right, go ahead and inbox. As I told you, I'm done with school. I'm meeting some of you. You know, you know yourselves. I've been answering questions. Each day I tell myself, at least if I can answer 20 to 50 people, I'm happy, okay? Yeah, or Evans is inviting people here. Thank you so much for coming. That was PhD students today. PhD students just apply. The sky is the limit. By the way, I think if you're a PhD student, getting the visa should be easy. That is my opinion, okay? That's just my opinion. But if you apply, you will get in. As those who came in late, I was just reading some schools. You can just come directly from bachelor's degree and apply for doctorate degrees. Maybe that will be a longer program. But you need to be careful. If you go back home, they, will, they might tell you where is your master's. So maybe you are better off applying for a PhD after you finish your master's, okay? All right. What is Solomon is saying you're doing a really good job. Thank you so much. Which schools are offering PhD scholarships? Many of them, okay? So many of them. The sky is the limit, my friends. I can come and post one of these days the links of the PhD schools. Next time we are moving to the spouse visa, okay? Today is a late video in the evening. This one, I don't expect many people to watch, but I say this and sometimes they end up watching and I'm surprised, okay? Yeah, this is free information. Ivan, thank you so much. You're praying for me and I appreciate that, all right? Thank you so much. For those people who are giving up on the green card, you need not to give up. You know, Janet, on this page, okay, we don't give up. Lovely, I will get to you. I have so many messages, but I hope I get to you as, all right? Thank you so much for coming. If you did win the green card, you've won in another way. You need to go on the drawing table. Go back. Drawing board. Start all over again. Um, for student visas, all of us, we need to go down, apply for community colleges if we don't have very good grades. If we have a first degree, we are applying for master's or PhD programs. All of us, we are going to do that. If we don't know that it's expensive, we are looking for schools that do not require English requirements. They do not require TOEFL. They do not require SATs. They do not require GREs. We are doing our research to find the cheapest community colleges, the cheapest universities possible, the ones that offer international scholarships. When we reach here, we are going to use other strategies that Janet has taught us on how to survive so that we can avoid deportation, so we can make sure we graduate, use our OPTs, move into H1B, eventually go into green cards, okay? Just because you didn't win a green card does not mean you will not win a green card two, three, four, five, ten years from now. You just have to start the process. While you're here, as a student, you'll still be okay. All right? You'll be able to raise your family. You'll be able to continue with other things in life. All right? I love you so much for coming. Remember to keep the dream alive and have a strong desire to succeed. The desire will push you over the edge. The desire will make you the best. You stand, you fall, you stand, you fall. You never give up, my friends, because you know what? You're the best. When you see us here, we have fallen, we have stood, we stand, we fall, we stand, we fall. We never give up. That's why we are here. Who told you? We just came here and everything was just ha ha ha. There was no hulu la la la. Okay? There was no, we just work hard. Okay? When we go there, things are bad, we cry, and then we come back. That's what makes us successful. Okay? Who told you that you, you, you lose once and you start crying and you run away? Who told you that? Who told you that? Sorry. Sorry. I'm here to tell you that for you to succeed, you have to cry some tears. But you know what? You get stronger because you learn lessons. When there is nothing as good as falling, some of you, you know, you know from experience. You are just refusing to, let me tell even some of you are young. Girlfriends have dropped you. Boyfriends have dropped you. But you are here. In fact, you went ahead and found a more beautiful wife. You found even a more handsome man. Is that true? So it's the same thing. It's the same thing, my friends. Okay? You go to the embassy, they deny you. You go home, you cry. You've lost some money, yes. By the way, that's another thing. You take risks that other people are not willing. When other people are saying, I'm not going to lose $60 just to show up, and they never give their visas anyway. If you don't show up, how will you get a visa? 
Okay? How will you get a visa if you don't lose money? You have to go there believing. You lose, you go, you raise more money, you go back. <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you do. By the time you show up here, you really appreciate. You really appreciate yourself. Okay? Janet, may Lord bless you. I'm keeping my dream alive. I like that, Harry Kibe. I love that, okay? All right. Thank you so much, my friends. I'm from work tonight, okay? I'm going to sleep. I'm going to go in the inbox. If you don't see me, just know I'm listening to other people. The good news is, the good news is, when I present, I'm presenting on behalf of everyone else. You will see someone else asking the same, same question like you. For those who go in the comment section, thank you so much for loving. Thank you so much for sharing, okay? By the way, go on Janet Rangi, okay, on YouTube. Here on Facebook, we like when you follow. If you are a follower here, make sure you like the page. We are five stars. I love your reviews. Janet on this page is five stars, all right? And we support each other on this page because eventually we have one goal is to win, our goal is to win. Our goal is to make it. Our goal is to make money. Our goal is to raise our families in a comfortable way. And our goal is to change our communities forever. Okay? All right. Who is that? Frida will be the last one. She's saying risk takers are winners. Exactly. Exactly. Those who don't take risks, they are always in the same place. Okay? Hi, Janet. Good night. It's morning here. I'm preparing to go to work. See you, Lydia, and everyone else, all right? Until the next video, I will see you soon. Thank you so much for always coming. Thank you for supporting me, all right? Thank you so much. Bye-bye.